I hope so. If you can't hear me, ah, I hear the, the speaker, so it works. Okay, uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Andreas, and I will talk about device, device tailored compositors with a cute valent compositor framework. It's a very long title, and I'll, I will explain it to you in a minute what I want to tell you. Uh, shortly about me, um, you can find me in several IRC channels. Um, I was uh, the KDE project since about seven years. I did a PhD in some theory stuff, and today I'm doing completely different things at Class E Systems, the company that are doing these big agriculture machines with a with really nice green, much nicer than the green of the competitors. Um, and we are hiring, by the way. Um, but this talk is somewhere between my KDE work and my uh, professional work. It's about a really, really nice technology that you can use for embedded devices for displaying stuff from several uh, processes, so from several applications. With this talk, I, my goal is to give a short practical introduction to this framework, tell you how to use it, how you can experiment with it, and make you eager to, to really use it, since it's uh, extremely cool. I'm not from the Qt Valent Compositor developers. I'm, I know them, I work, well, I shared a lot with them, but I'm not completely from, from them. I'm uh, looking more from the um, really usage point of view on these uh, frameworks. Okay, it's always very hard to talk about embedded stuff uh, in the car industry and the automotive industry, so I thought about a really nice practical example uh, where I won't get any problems about this funny uh, confidential stuff. That's my kitchen. And assume I want to have an embedded device somewhere here that helps me in the kitchen. Um, yeah, what do I want to have on that embedded device? I want to have some applications that help me, for example, for cooking eggs and for cooking a tea and maybe is the current time, and some other applications. I want to have a really nice seamless UI between these applications. So no borders, they should be really nicely aligned. I want to have uh, well, some touch gestures, like swiping to the left, to the right, um, and I'm using some nice uh, hardware like Raspberry Pi or some other embedded hardware that has a, a GPU, so a little bit of 3D acceleration. That means I can use Qt Quick, which is important later in this talk. Uh, actually, nowadays you can use it without 3D acceleration. I'm not sure about this framework, but it's always a plus. And well, as I said before, the important point about uh, having several applications there is I have several processes that I somehow have to compose on the, the screen, so I need a compositor. So usually a random compositor. And yes, everything what I explained there is much, triv much more trivial to achieve as a sim simple process Runs, run process application, but well, if you're looking at the modern use case on in the automotive industry, or ex for example in the agriculture business, where we have uh, really, really hard requirements with really heavy applications running on this machine at the same time that you have to compose, so much harder use case actually in the, uh, than in the automotive industry, um, well, you ha want to have several processes there. So. I'm a, do a small picture about what I explained to you. That's the size of a Raspberry Pi display. Um, I want to have the, the applications aligned horizontally. I want to have this swipe gesture, left and right. I want to have a navigation information, so where I'm currently on my screens. And I want to have some notifications that should be sent from the uh, applications and shown in the compositor, which is uh, actually not that trivial as it sounds in the first hearing. Um, okay, and the rest of this talk is how can I create such a device with the Qt Valent Compositor Framework. And actually I want to show a compositor that fits on one slide for achieving this. So, a little bit about Valent. I assume that all of you have heard that name at least once. Um, it's a protocol that explains how you communicate between a client and a display server. So between an application with a window or several windows and the application server, the display server, which is a valent compositor, which is responsible for putting the, the windows somewhere on your screen and also for import handling and so on. So it's really the, about this communication. Um, in the embedded world, since several years, it's the default standard. Nobody is using X anymore, at least I don't know about anyone. 
Um, there are a lot of Aiden compositors, since it's simply protocols, you, so, you can so you can implement your own compositor. Uh, you can find Sebastian, that's a reference uh, compositor. You can find in the desktop environments a lot of different compositors. For example, we have our own one, Quinn, in KDE. Uh, GNOME has its own, Enlightenment has its own. Um, I actually also encountered uh, proprietary compositors somewhere in, in the field. Um, and well, well, it gives you a basic protocol. Sometimes you need a little bit more. You need want to have your own custom protocol extension. For example, in KDE, we had the extension for uh, snapshots that uh, you can ask for a snapshot of all the windows together, that how they are currently um, displayed on the screen. That's a simple protocol extension. How a client communicates with the server, it says, I want to have a picture. Can you store it up somewhere? Um, those protocol extensions are, well, great defined in a well-defined standard. Then you have some uh, tooling that creates a um, boilerplate code and connects it to your programs, and then you can simply use it. There are different available shells, which is, uh, well, it's kind of which, which language do you speak to your compositor. The default one is uh, this WL shell that uh, was introduced in uh, Rayland 1.0, and we have uh, the XDG shell, which is the actual successor, and we have in the automotive uh, field, especially this Ivy shell extension, which gives uh, you a small, tiny interface how you can communicate uh, with your, your compositor and with the goal that it's we, that's interchangeable. It's, uh, you can take any compositor that speaks Ivy shell and you exchange it. However, that is really limited in uh, what you can do there. And in my use cases, it never worked until now. So I looked at this framework at this cute valent compositor framework. Um, with this framework, um, I don't know how many of you uh, used Qt Quick before. I see a few hands. Um, it's, a, it's a declarative language that, well, it's a decla declarative, declarative j uh, language, looks like a little bit, little bit like JSON, um, where you say what you want to have. Like, I want to have a rectangle, then you have a rectangle. And uh, you can do, do the same, or you can now do the same with the Qt Valent Compositor Framework. You can say, I want to have a compositor, I want to have an output, I want to put my window somewhere in the output, and everything works nicely together. So it's really the power of declarative language for creating such things. Um, and this Qt Valent Compositor Framework, since uh, I think two, two weeks ago that we have this uh, Qt 5.8 release, now we have this. Um, for these protocol extensions I talked shortly about last slide, you can um, you know, also get a little bit more tooling that you get Qt style C++ API, not only the C style APIs with this, uh, this framework that's automatically generated there. You can, of course, what you want to have are several screens if you have a device and several monitors. That's nice to have. It has, um, it implements uh, all these different shells I talked about. And the core is actually stable and, well, it's, it's there since uh, several years. It's, uh, I think, at least five, since Qt 5.0, only the API is new. So it's a really stable piece of software or, piece, uh, or framework that you have here. And what they did here is really this really nice Qt quick style API to use it in a really nice way. Um, I shortly talked about this Ivy. Ivy shell extension. Um, my problem recently, or until now, was always that it only fits, at least from my point of view, for really static settings. Like I have a, a screen and I have some, uh, some windows that I want to put statically somewhere on the screen. That's really nicely we're doing with Ivy, um, but with global gesture control and other stuff I wanted to have, it didn't, didn't work. And for such requirements, I would actually have to share, uh, work directly on my valence server, and I didn't want to hack on Weston, since it's really not my field, my, not my experience, uh, what I can use there. So, um, looking a little bit more deeper, what we can do with a valent compositor, or how a s possible system architecture would look like. We have several applications, we have a compositor, and possibly you also have a, well, intermediate application, which I simply call it a shell. Um, so we have the apps. The apps are 
talking to the value compositor by the default value protocol. Um, within, within Qt, it's uh, abstracted by the Qt platform extraction layer. You uh, call it if you simply use minus platform Valent, and it works magically. Um, you can also use your custom protocol extension, for example, for notifications, which I will introduce in a few slides, how you can add a small extension for, um, for notifications. Or you could also have um, a proxy in between. This is uh, architecture on the right, right side, where you have a shell that um, gets all the all information or all these uh, IPC information by some mechanism, and then that's, that is the only va a real Wayland client that's talking your protocols and talking to, to the compositor. If you want to have a little bit more stability and um, encapsulation of the uh, really critical stuff, since you never want to have your Wayland server being crashy, and you can put your little bit more critical stuff in, in the shell. I will look at this more simple uh, architecture here, but the other one is also really simple to, to achieve. And well, that's the main slide of this talk. That's my compositor for what I told you. Um, I will talk a little bit about it on this slide, and then I will go a little bit deeper in the next slides. So like I said, it's declarative. I did some imports for the basic stuff I need there. Then I said, well, I want to have a value compositor, and then I want to have an output. Like, well, you want to have something on your screen. Um, here below, I have the WL shell. From that, I get some notifications. Hey, there's a new surface, so a new window from application. <laughs> and if I get such a such windows, window, I put it into a list model, since that's uh, nicely into UEC here, since I want to have the windows aligned next to each other. And I simply use the default Qt quick stuff for aligning items, rectangular items, um, somewhere on the screen. And I put it in a wrapper, it's called a shell surface item, and then queued it everything for me, what I wanted to, to have here. But look a little bit more deeper into it. So we always have, or typically we have, um, as a root, this valent compositor. Um, <laughs> it, well, it's the actual representation of the compositor in the background. Everything is created for your valent compositor. Um, and usually you should have an output, <laughs> otherwise you don't see anything. You should have a shell extension to get information that you have, that you are, there are surfaces to be presented. Um, the shell extension actually gives you inf information sent by the Valent protocol. Here we have uh, this WL shell, and we get the information there's a surface created. If I add uh, my own custom extension there, I can add several uh, several extensions there, I can also get these informations, that I get a signal from application, like your tea is ready. Um, and we have other shells, uh, but for the embedded use case, it's usually enough to simply use this WL shell, since we don't have a fully fledged desk, the Linux desktop here. Then we have um, the server, surface item and the Q valent quick item, which are nice wrappers around the surfaces. So a surface is simply a field where you have some, well, some image data, and you want to put it on your screen. So uh, you get, you put it into such a wrapper, and then you can use it exactly like a typical cute quick item. So that's, a, that's the actually nicest thing about this uh, whole te technology. You um, handle windows like they are not windows, but simply rectangles with some stuff on it. And so you're a, well, a simple, cute, quick developer can simply use it with all his intuition from um, what he usually do, does. Just consider, well, this surface is, is a rectangle, and I move it, and I do some animations on it. I enlarge it. I turn it. I put a shader on it, and all the stuff you can do. And that's really nicely, since uh, you're working on compositor like it's a, well, simple process application with a little bit of cute quick items that you get from somewhere. And that's the real power of it, that you can uh, get on a high level really nice effects, really nice impl implementations without bo being bored with all the technical stuff below. Um, yeah, and well, uh, what do I have? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, doing the visibility, it's doing the input stuff, so I can deactivate uh, the input stuff, I can hide it, I can show it. 
and well, it's really acting like a typical item. Um, and or of course, I need an output that's simply in a rectangle area where I show my, my results of the compositor. And I, of course, I can have multiple of them. Um, I talked a little bit about um, protocol extensions. Uh, for my use case, I said, well, I want to have notifications that my clients send there, like, your tea is ready, your eggs are ready, um, time to go to bed, or what, whatever my, uh, my um, um, applications want to show it globally on the screen. And what you see here is a typical XML snippet which describes such a protocol. You can use the uh, typical valence tooling, the valence scanner to get um, the binding for it. Here I'm using the Qt tooling since I get a, a, also a C++ API. I can run it over it and of course uh, well, all the code, code and the talk, talk slides and everything is available on GitHub with all history. Um, and well, what I said, you are running your tooling over it, you get your boilerplate code, your bindings, you are put it into your applications and it works. And so you can have your typical signals and slots where you can connect to, where you can send data and everything works. And well, <laughs> actually that is what I did for my uh, initial uh, well, idea what I have for my kitchen application. That's, uh, well, I got a uh, notification, your tea is ready. I have uh, two applications running here. And I will try if I get a live demo running here. Uh, let's start my compositor. There is a compositor. And I... X application. Let's see. Oh, there's an application. And maybe a T application. There it is. And maybe another X application. Then we have a little bit to see here at my navigation bar. And I can move it. And, well, go T time a little bit down. I can simply run the applications and, well, it's easy to achieve something like that. Um, and if I would have time, uh, would have had time, I could have put it on my Raspberry Pi and it works. I did several similar things while the tea's ready. Um, and it's really nicely working also on a lot of embedded devices. So I was faster than I thought, so we have a little bit of time for question later on. Can already think starting, uh, start thinking. Um, so again, what I wanted to show you in this talk is where this new Qt Valent Compositor framework, which allows you to simply create a Valent Compositor tailored for the specific use cases and um, wishes for your embedded device. You don't have to take a stock Valent Compositor that is uh, maybe cumbersome, makes problems with uh, with Qt event loops, which I also have seen with uh, proprietary uh, compositors. You can tailor it directly to, to the user interaction concept your designers give to you. Since it's actually designer, cute quick designer work, uh, what you do here. Um, the pro uh, compositor I created here, it's uh, literally a one day job to create such a compositor. Even the first time I worked on it, well, I, at that time I took two days to, uh, to get it working. Um, that's really nice thing, and you can pr use it for fast prototyping of compositors. You can also use it, well, for doing real compositors that you want to use later on. Um, and well, the power, as I already said several times, I think the power of this framework is that it gets uh, the right abstraction to um, get you, you in, into a position where you create um, a composit compositor or user interface without thinking about all the complicated valent related stuff lo lo far below the surface, but you can really look at um, the UI, the UI compositing and the uh, overall interactions you want to have there to uh, get a really cool and a nice uh, user interface. And 
the best thing is really to try it out. You find the, my code here, you find uh, a lot of example codes in the Qt repositories. Um, and yeah, there's also a little bit of documentation, however the examples are sometimes more helpful currently than uh, the documentation, I think. Okay, and there are a few slides, uh, uh, three pointers. Johan um, did a nice talk about uh, the same framework at uh, QtCon. There's uh, the online help and most importantly, the IRC channel. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Um, I saw an example um, in my office, not yet, but uh, it, it really works that you, are, that you have um, well, several displays and several outputs. There are also example codes for, for exactly that use case, the multiple screen demo. There are two repositories. into your compositor, but it should be, well, that's your freedom you have as a compositor framework, and then uh, you look at, at what you want to have, see, want to see there, and the compositor should handle it. It's, uh, well, it's your task to create uh, all these effects in the compositor. It only gives you a framework to use it with a cute quick, and then uh, you can implement it. Okay, no more questions, and thanks a lot.